Well, October saw a continuation of what seemed to be a softening trend in the housing market, particularly being led by Sydney and Melbourne, where, of course, the hottest housing markets have seen very strong capital gains over the past three and a half years. But we have seen over the past couple of months now, the rate of value growth is starting to moderate uh, um, from the very high levels. Values are still rising. We've seen city values rise by 0.3%. Over the past months in, in Melbourne, they're up by 0.6%. So that's the other change, is we're starting to see Melbourne now consistently outperform the Sydney market, not just in the rate of capital gain, but also in auction clearance rates, in transaction volumes, which are continuing to rise in Melbourne, but now they're levelling off, uh, even falling across uh, the New South Wales market. In the other markets, we're still seeing a continuation of values falling in, in Perth and in Darwin and uh, the rest of the capital cities are, are, are still fairly consistently very moderate growth. We've got Brisbane where values are up about 4.5% the last 12 months. Uh, Canberra and Hobart are also showing some levels of growth and Adelaide just relatively flat. Well, historically, we've been seeing detached housing outperforming apartments for the rate of capital gain uh, quite substantially uh, um, in Melbourne and also in Sydney. What we've seen over the past quarter, though, is that apartments have shown a higher rate of capital growth than houses. Whether or not this is a trend that's going to continue is yet to be seen. I think uh, I'd be quite surprised if it did continue, considering the amount of new supply we've seen coming into the apartment space in Sydney. Well, interestingly enough, across each of the capital cities, we are seeing stock levels rising, or the number of advertised homes is rising, as we do see every spring. But for the first time since 2012, we're now seeing listing numbers in Sydney higher than what they were a year ago. Most other capital cities have also seen, seen a rise, but we're seeing the most substantial rises, firstly in Sydney, but also in Perth and Darwin, where buyer demand has really tapered off. First time we've seen that happen since 2012 in the Sydney marketplace, which means buyers have more stock to choose from. There's less urgency in the market as well, which means buyers can, can take the, the time to make a decision and try to get the best price that's suitable for their budget. Well, the cash rate decision, I think, is, is looking really close. We've got a very low inflation figure. We've got uh, the housing market starting to cool down, which the Reserve Bank will be very, very comfortable with. And of course, we've also got the out-of-cycle rate hike we've seen from uh, um, the lending sector over the past few weeks as well, as well as premiums on investor loans, which are probably um, keeping uh, um, the rate of capital gain a bit lower. So I think the Reserve Bank will be very comfortable with that. Whether they'll cut rates or not is yet to be seen, of course. So my, my call is we'll probably see rates remaining on hold until we see the CapEx figures come through. December, of course, being the last time this year the Reserve Bank is going to meet until the next time, which is February. So we may still see a rate cut this year. Financial markets are still pricing in a rate cut by uh, um, the first quarter of 2016. Well, it looks like 2015 will be a year of change. We've seen the marketplace probably peaking out in terms of growth. We've seen several capital cities moving into the down phase of the cycle, being Darwin and Perth. And we've seen Melbourne now starting to outperform Sydney. We've also seen rental yields hit new record lows in those cities as well. I think it's also the year where we've seen unprecedented intervention in the marketplace from the likes of APRA as they look to cool the level of investment demand in the marketplace, which seems to be starting to take an effect uh, in, in the final quarter of the year. Well, real estate agents uh, need to face the market conditions, and if the marketplace is softening, then that's a really, op a really good opportunity for the quality agents to show how, how professional they are and demonstrate um, their experience in the housing market. Of course, there's going to be uh, education for vendors. As the marketplace slows down, it can be difficult for vendors to adjust to changed buyer expectations as well. Homes may take longer to sell, vendors may have to discount their prices more than what they would have in the past, and they'll probably see fewer auctions um, successful on auction day as we have uh, um, um, over the past month or so. For agents, it's really about demonstrating their skill sets, their levels of negotiation and their ability to educate the vendors and work with the market as it stands.